Hello, friends. Today, we're going to take a quick look at an application that is running via Fastly. How real-time logging gives us insight into how it's being used and how being able to push configuration changes out in under a minute gives you the ability to make simple fixes on the fly. In this example app, we have a very simple coin flipping game with a leaderboard. When a player clicks the brag button in this game, the leaderboard is updated with their score. Here we can see their score get updated on the leaderboard. And if we go take a look over in the logs, we should see this come through in basically real time. And there it is. Our request to the leaderboard was a post to the messaging API. We can see this in our logs because of Fastly's real-time logging capabilities. Here, we can see that this is set up to run through paper trail. However, Fastly has over two dozen different logging endpoints that we partner with, including Splunk, Datadog, Honeycomb, and others. Now, if we go back to this application, let's take a minute and pretend that there is a malicious user who wants to send a fake score through. I'm going to take a REST client here, Insomnia, and send through an impossibly high score. And there it is. We can see that the score got added to the leader's board, impossibly high. And let's take a look over into the logs to see if we can watch this happen. See it? If not, let's try going into one of my canned searches that we have here for suspected bots. And here we, it becomes a little bit more obvious. We can see that this request is missing the username which was in the other updates to the, uh, to the leaderboard API, and also that its user agent is somewhat weird. So how are we going to block this? Well, there's a couple ways we could do this, including Fastly's own signal sciences WAF, but I'm gonna give a quick demo of a, of a fast and dirty way that you can block requests like this using Fastly's edge dictionaries. So if we go over into my configuration here within Fastly, we can see that I have a very simple three lines of code that is doing a lookup into a table called UA block list and checking for the user agent. If the user agent is in that table, I'm going to go ahead and block it. Here we can see this, this table, once again, UA block list, and it is currently empty. So I could add an item to it here. What I'm going to do instead is copy it from our logs and go via the admin console for my application and use our own APIs to send this request through. So I'm gonna paste in the user agent here, send that through. And if we go back over to the edge dictionary now, when I refresh it, we can see that this user agent is now included in our block list. If we go back over to the application, we can confirm that normal requests that I make still go through normally. And let's go back to the logs. And we can see here was the request earlier. And here is my request just now that's showing with the, uh, that does have my username in place. And if we go back to our REST client and try to send a request now, we get a 403 forbidden. And that's because our user agent is in our table and that table is blocking all requests from that user agent. And we can see this information showing up in our logs in real time. 